do we worship you? Do we give you full control, God? Cause we don't wanna be the same no more. Guard this man. Amen. I just pray that you're having a wonderful day today already. Uh, some of you probably are going to be getting out of lunch soon. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. This is such a important little verse that God gave me last night. My pastor actually, uh, me and him shared about it last night at the men's Bible study. About guard this man. Guard this man. How many, how many of y'all know that, that it's so important that you guard this man? You're probably like, well, what man are you talking about, Nino? My husband? My, my boss? What man are you talking about? I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. Guard this man. Start my shift. God bless you, Christina. Pray you have a wonderful and blessed day. Amen. So look, I'm actually driving right now. I ain't even gonna lie. That's why I'm not looking at the phone much. But it's in 1 Kings chapter 20. Verse 39 through 40. If you can, if you got time, just write those, write that verse down. And man, it's such a good word, I'm telling you. Maybe you're you're saying, man, I, I really want to grow. I really do want to grow closer to God. I really want to um I want to continue. I want to continue to 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 continue to to grow in the things of God, I want to continue to uh, grow stronger in the things of God. I I don't want to go back. That's that's the thing. Maybe you're saying today is I refuse to go back. I'm not going back. Just like uh, just like uh. Israel Holden song. I'm not going back. Moving on. I love that song. Anyways, so we find a, a prophet. He said he went to the king. The prophet placed a bandage. Actually, the prophet was like, he went up to this one guy. He was like, hey, uh, punch me in the eye. Like, can you imagine a prophet telling you that? It's like your pastor coming up to you and telling you this. Saying, hey, I want you to punch me in my face. <laughs> First thing you're going to do is just laugh because you're like, wait, yeah, right. You ain't serious, man. You're a prophet. Like, you're a man of God. What do you mean punch you in the face? Punch you in the eye? What? And he's like, yeah, punch me in the eye. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do it. And he was like, well, because you refuse to do what the Lord told you to do, a lion is going to eat you after this conversation. Dang. He went super extreme just now he went super extreme he said a lion is gonna eat him and he's just gonna be eight <laughs> he's just gonna get ate by a lion because he didn't punch the prophet in the eye and so he and he said okay well they left and that's exactly what happened he got ate by a lion and uh he went to a next guy and he said i want you to punch me in the eye I can just imagine like this a comedian, like a comedy movie. He's like, punch me in the eye. And without a second thought, this dude was ready. He just, boom, punched him in the eye. You know, it doesn't say it in the Bible, but I think that guy that he asked the second time probably was holding something against him. Because for you to just quickly respond, either that or he really loved the Lord and he just was like that, like what God said, I'll give you a new spirit and a new heart, a responsive heart. Maybe he just knew how to respond regardless of how it seemed, regardless of how dumb 
it may have seemed to us, regardless of how dumb it may seem to him, but he knew that regardless of what, if God said it, I'm going to do it because I know that through my obedience to whatever God says, whatever it says, whether I have to punch him in the eye or not, God is going to bless me and God is, God is faithful with whatever he says. And I just learned to just trust God. Man, have you ever, have you gotten to that point that man, maybe God has had you do some crazy things, but because you were obedient, man, you ended up being blessed. So man, he, he was just to that point, like, I don't understand why, but I'm just going to punch this dude in the face. Cause he said, <laughs> and so he punches him in the face. And so the, the prophet puts a bandage and then that's where we get to verse 39, uh, verse 38. And then it says, the prophet placed a bandage over his eye and disguised himself and then waited beside the road for the king. As the king passed by, the prophet called out to him, sir, I was in the thick of the battle. Can you imagine what is a prophet doing in the battle? What is a prophet? Man, you want, you, you're going to have somebody in the battle. You want a knight. You want a, a soldier. You want somebody. Uh, yep, for real. Uh, you want somebody that knows how to hold a weapon. You want, man, you, you need somebody like that. But instead there was a prophet. He said, I was in the thick of the battle. And suddenly a man brought me a prisoner. He said, guard this man. If for any reason he gets away, you will either die or pay a fine of 77 pounds of silver. But while I was busy doing something else, man, he's in the thick of the battle. He has a prisoner of all things, man. If I'm in the, if I'm in a battle and I'm in the thick of the battle and things are going crazy around me, man, give me a sword, man. Give me a, give me a shield. Or matter of fact, give me backup. Give me something that's going to help me while I'm in the middle of this battle. But instead he gave him a, he gave him a prisoner. And then he said, if you lose this prisoner or something happens to him, you're going to pay with your life or you're going to have to pay a fine. And he said, but while I was busy, I got busy and I lost him. I lost this prisoner, man. And then look what happens. And the prisoner disappeared. And he says, well, it's your fault. The king replied, man, it's your fault. The king replied you have brought judgment on yourself. And so that's what I wanted to talk about right now. I want to talk about that right now. I want to talk about guarding this man in the middle of a battle. Did you know that we are in a battle every single day, guys? Ladies and my brothers and my sisters, man, we in a battle every single day, man. You probably in a battle all morning this morning. You probably woke up in a battle. You probably next to your spouse and man battle because of an argument yesterday or something. You woke up and man, you in a battle. You in the thick of the battle, he said. I was in the thick of it, man. Maybe right now you in the thick of it. You have, you taking lunch or you away from that person or you, you finally got to pull away. And right now you in a position where you just in the thick of it because you're in emotions. You're, you're in a, a place of mental breakdown. You just like, man, I don't know what to do right now. You know what? I keep going through this and over and over and over again. And God, I know that I gave you, I know that I promised you that I wouldn't do this no more. I know that I told you I wouldn't act like this no more. I know that I've, I've even told these people that, man, I stand for righteousness, but yet right now I don't feel like it right now. I just feel like putting down what they call the Christian card, right? I, right now I'm just, I'm just done. I'm, I'm fed up. And right now I'm going to tell you guys, do not lose focus on this man. Man, 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 man. If this if this message wasn't, it ain't for anybody else right now. I'm going to tell you this message is for me because every day, regardless of what we may face, we are in a battle. We're in a battle physically, spiritually, mentally. The, the enemy will attack us in all these different areas. But you know what? Do not. That's that's God. That's the king. He's, don't do not lose sight of this man do not lose this man in this battle because man it's so important that you keep this man uh healthy man it's so important that you keep an eye on this man because this man 
it, it plays a very important role. Why we don't understand right now? Why I don't know. I don't know because right now this man doesn't seem important to me right now. Right now, man, my response uh, uh, right now, my anger was, seems more important to me right now. Me getting back at this person seems more important to me right now. Man, me yelling back at this person, me right now uh, responding in the in the heat of temptation, me right now, man, right now, this man is the last man, the, the last thing I'm thinking about. But I'm gonna tell you, do not lose focus on this man, because just like what happened, he said, in the thick of the battle, man, I lost focus. In the thick of the battle, man, I let things get to me. In the thick of the battle, I allowed my situation, my circumstance. I allowed the temptation. I, I allowed the very thing that I promised to you, God, that I would never do again. Because of because I refused to get into your presence and because I refused to make time for you, God, and because I refused to submit to you, Jesus, today, man, I got distracted and I lost sight of the man in the battle, in the thick of the battle. And uh, what happened? The king told him, well, it's your fault. Man, today you're in a position where maybe you responded and you did something stupid and you, or maybe you're in a position where you wanna do something stupid and I'm gonna tell you, you do it, it's gonna be your fault. You're not gonna have anybody else to blame. And I know this, that's harsh, but, but man, it's so true. We gotta get to a, I'm gonna tell you, blaming others will never allow growth to happen in your life. If you've been wanting growth in your relationship with Jesus Christ, then it has to start with, uh, I'm no longer going to blame anybody else, God. God, I, 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 I blame myself, Jesus. But you know what? Not only that, but man, God, your grace is enough. Your grace is sufficient. Father, you're, you love me. You, you said your mercies are new to me daily. Father, I, I, I give it to you. God, I don't want to be this person no more, God. You know what? And that's for those that maybe had messed up already. Man, to, you can stop it now. You ain't got to keep going fur, further into the thing. You ain't got to keep making the situation worse. You ain't got to keep allowing the enemy to make things worse. You ain't got to allow the enemy to use these people, your loved ones. Uh, but instead, you can choose to submit to God, resist the devil. And the Bible says that he would flee from you. And then it goes on to saying, but draw closer to God. And so, so God can draw closer to you. Man, me and my wife spoke about this before. When two things are pressing together, it's impossible to, it's impossible to put something between them two. When two are pressing forward together, when there's force being pushed on both sides towards each other, man, it's impossible to allow things to come in between. And that's what God is saying. And man, the word resist is such a awesome word when you know the definition for resist. To resist something, guys, the, the definition for resist is to be successful in ignoring anything that would be harmful or wrong for you. Man, so today I want you the, to, to practice that. Practice on resisting the enemy, but I'm going to tell you, the only way you'll be successful in resisting, the only way you'll ever be successful in the resisting part of that whole passage is when you draw close to God. And so... And God promises that he'll draw close to you, closer to you. And man, so whatever it is you're facing today, you ain't got to, you ain't got to fall back. You ain't got to fall back. You ain't got to allow uh, whatever the physical things that are going on around you to affect the internal you, to affect the man on the inside. Guard this man. Today, walk the rest of your day out saying, you know what? I choose to guard this man. I choose to guard this man. The Bible says in Proverbs 4, above all else, guard your hearts because out of it comes the issues of life. Out of it determines uh, life's, uh, I, I think it says life's future in another, uh, oh, life's uh, passage or whatever. I don't know. I, I got to go to it. I got to go to it. I gotta go to it because it's so important guys we cannot allow that's the enemy's job to still kill and destroy man to steal your attention to steal your attention to to sidetrack you and to to mess up things he wants to ruin your credibility because man you've been telling people man i i love jesus i love god and man what what better to to destroy your credibility in front of them to where men 
people will look at you and they're like, yeah, right. That's why I don't believe in God. That's why I don't look. That's why I don't trust people that, that talk about God because they're two-faced. I'm going to tell you, I say that because a guy told me that before. I had a guy tell me that before, man. And I was like, wow, why, do you, why is he saying that? And then I began to look at my life and the way that I was living. I began to look at how I was like that prophet, man. I, every day in the thick of the battle, I would forget this man. I would forget and I would lose sight of this man. And, and I would stop, I, would, I wasn't guarding my heart. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Wow, it's your fault, the prince, the king told him. It's your fault. Well, it's your fault that you lost him. It's your fault. Man, guard your heart. Because for it determines the course of your life. Wow. You will only produce what is in you. You will only be able to produce what is in you. You wonder why everything is chaotic around you? What's in you? Not saying that the more you get into God that everything is just going to be fine and dandy. You're just going to be good. Everything's going to be peaches and cream like they used to say back in the day. No, not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is sometimes we wonder why we allow certain things around us or why things are happening around us. And why we're acting ways is because what is in us. You want to know why you've been responding the way that you've been responding? Well, what's in you? Guard your heart. Guard your heart. God, Jesus said in Romans 12, Paul, 12, 2. Do not conform to the ways of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Guard your heart. Anything that comes in will come out. Man, guard your heart like a goalie. Man, not, nope, 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 not today, Satan. Nope, nope. Amen. So, I just wanted to give y'all that word, man, because it meant so much to me last night. It was so powerful. It's a great reminder for those that already know. And it's a good word for, 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 uh, it's a good tool. For somebody that didn't know hey it's a heart issue hey it's a heart thing hey I want to be overcomer hey well guard your heart don't allow things to come that are negative in your life no more you wonder why people tell you you need to let go of bad things well it's because it, it the heart is important amen but I love you guys uh, stay stay pushing in God stay pressing guard your heart and most of all, stay connected to God. You want to grow, grow in Him. Grow in Him. Grow in Jesus Christ. Paul said it best in Colossians 2. He said, now that you've given your life to Christ Jesus, root yourself in Him. He said, continue following Him. Don't stop. He said, continue to follow Him. Now that you've given your life to Jesus, continue to follow Him. Don't stop. It doesn't end there. But now grow in him. He said, root yourselves in him. Root yourselves and build your lives on Jesus Christ. And he said, and only then will you begin to grow. Your faith would begin to grow and you would have a thankful heart. And so uh, today, continue to press forward. Continue to push forward in Jesus, with Jesus. Because you ain't walking this walk alone. You may feel alone. You may not have a brother and sister around you 24-7. But I'm going to guarantee you something. Jesus said that he was going to have a helper with us every single day. That would never leave us. And it's the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ. It's his spirit. It's who he is. And man, we get the privilege to have it on the inside of us. What a blessing. What a blessing. Amen. So I love you guys. Uh, continue to press forward. And, and, and stay connected to God, like I said. Remain in Him so He can remain in you. Amen. God bless you.